Welcome to Everlasting Talk. Hello, welcome to Everlasting Talk. I'm your host, Ever. Today, we're doing a biography series on Napoleon Bonaparte or Napoleon I. Before we continue, make sure to like, subscribe, and follow on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you guys so much, and let's get started. Napoleon Bonaparte was a French statesman and military leader who is widely regarded as one of the most influential figures in modern European history. Born in Corsica on August 15, 1769, he rose to the ranks of the French military during the French Revolution, eventually becoming Emperor of France from 1804 to 1814. Napoleon's military prowess was obvious from a young age. He attended a military academy in France and entered the French army as a second lieutenant at the age of 16 years old. As a teenager, he was already a second lieutenant. Wow. At age 26, he quickly um, escalated through the ranks and was promoted to brigadier general. Napoleon's military victories during the French Revolutionary Wars drew the French's government's attention, was appointed commander of the Army of Italy in 1796. In this capacity, he had beaten the Austrians several times, cultivating the Battle of Montegro in 1800. Napoleon eventually entered politics after his military achievements and was chosen as first consul of France in 1799. Soon uh, gained control and wanted to modernize his France political and economic systems. He established a Napoleonic Code, new legal code based on the concepts of equality, individual rights, and centralized government. Napoleon was crowned Emperor of France in 1804 at the Notre Dame Cathedral in an elaborate ceremony. He then launched a series of wars to expand the French Empire. He took over much of Europe, including Spain, Italy, and the Netherlands, and also established puppet governments in the countries of Poland and Austria. After many victories, eventually it came to the Russian campaign of eight, of, 19, of 1812. It saw Napoleon's army decimated by the cold Russian winter, which they were not prepared for. They did not have the proper gear, like jackets, boots, proper food supplies. The animals, you know, uh, fortunately, all were pa- they all passed away. So the Russian campaign was definitely a failure. Um, you know, some like some other dictator that was out, you know, a hundred years after him. Um, this def- after the defeat of the Battle of Plinxing, uh, I can't say that, of 1813, he saw an exile to the island of Elba, signaling the beginning of the end of his reign. So yeah, he was sent to Elba, the island of Elba, where he plotted, and eventually, two years later, also known as a Hundred's Day, his return to France in 1815 was brief, very brief. Uh, you know that's why it's called the Hundred Day. He was. Uh, he eventually beat up the army again, and he was defeated at the Battle of Waterloo by the by the British and Prussians, and it was exiled once again, but this time to Saint Helena. Napoleon's legacy is complicated. He is recognized as a military genius and brilliant strategist, but marred by his autocratic reign and his contempt for soldiers' lives, because he would just want to do, go to many wars and just. At the cost of his soldiers, he would, um, you know, definitely be, you know, very hard against them. He is recognized for his military campaigns, judicial changes in France's modernization, including uh, civil liberties and rights. He eventually passed away on May 5th, 1821, from stomach cancer at age 51 at the, in the island of St. Helena. So he never came back. Uh, he did have children. Uh, he had he got married twice, and he had multiple children. I think I think two of them became um, emperors themselves afterwards. Um, you know, 
he, I, uh, in conclusion, Napoleon Bonaparte was a pitiful character in contemporary European history. He ascended from humble beginnings in the island of Corsica to the most powerful men. His military campaigns and political reforms had a significant impact on Europe and the rest of the world. While his legacy is complicated, his name is linked with military brilliance and political influence. Many people say that, you know, they, there's a joke about his height. At the time, he was five foot five, so that's pretty average for people. But I don't know why they always thought he was shorter. But yeah, he—that's what he's pretty much known for. Obviously, out of his military genius, people say he was a short guy. You know, they made fun of him in movies and shows that he was really short. But um, yeah, he was a military genius. Um, he ended up taking France to new heights, and you know, took France out of you know post French Revolution. There's some books I could recommend to you that you can read on your own time. There's three books and a show, a movie. One of the books is called The Campaigns of Napoleon by David Chandler. Another one's called The P Private Memoirs of the Court of Napoleon by, this is a long name, by Louise Francois Joseph Bonset Roquefort, long name, and uh, Talleyrand by Duff Cooper. And also, you could check out a documentary movie called Napoleon that came out in 2000. So, yeah, this is a brief episode of Napoleon Bonaparte. Obviously, there's so much to talk about, but I decided to make it short. Um, so, yeah, in the next one, I'm going to talk about George Patton. But, yeah, if you guys like this episode, please let me know. Like, subscribe, and follow. Tell your friends and family. I'm trying to get 100 viewers per, per episode. Uh, thank you guys so much. Also, check out my other content I have on Instagram and on Twitter. Uh, I do I do different things. Like, I put, like, different wars and battles and different things like that. I stream sometimes as well. And, you know, Twitter's, you know, other things I, I talk about as well and facts and all that. So, check that out. I love your support. But, yeah, guys, thank you so much. This is Ever from Everlasting Talk. See you guys at the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Everlasting Talk. For more content, follow us on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram at Everlasting Talk. Thank you.